the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In my life, Lord, I see what you're doing one more time I truly lift my hands in praise of your name I lift my hands in praise of your name let's just sing it one more time I praise you I praise you Mean this song from the depth of your heart. Oh Lord, I praise you for your authority, for your grace upon our lives. In my life, I see what you're doing. One your name hallelujah we'll get to the word but let me just speak to one or two people silas i'm hearing the name silas who is silas silas the lord is speaking to me about someone called silas the lord wants to bring a miracle for the family of one Silas. Please, if you're here inside, outside, just notify so I will speak to you. I'm hearing a name Joyce. Is it Joyce or something? Joyce, like J O Y C E. Is there someone with that name? Joyce. Joyce. Please, if that belongs to you, very quickly so that I can just speak the word that the Lord is putting hallelujah I'm hearing a lady they call you Gimbia whatever that means they call you Gimbia Gimbia who is that inside outside please very quickly if there's someone like that with that case or someone related to you let me just speak over your life about them please don't just come out let's save time we have a lot they call you that name who has a sick patient in the hospital i'm seeing somebody having a sick patient you came here you left a sick patient in the hospital this is a very serious case this is i'm seeing the person just bones um this is like a lady a lady why is he out you're the one with a sick person where what's wrong the person I'm seeing is a blood disease. I'll pray for you, but 
this is a blood disease something that's eating the person is lying down in fact they are praying technically just for the person to die yes, very quickly let's just minister to them this is what the meetings are all about it's an opportunity for god to step in and bless me you know only the church is authorized to do this any other person who does this is illegal only the church if a herbalist does this is still illegal a politician does this is illegal only the church is authorized there are not many places that are permitted by god to do these kinds of things so we must take advantage of it what's wrong patient where What's wrong with you? He's permitting blood from his nose and his mouth and his legs has swell up. They told you something. A man of God told the family something. What did he say? That somebody charmed him from the village. Do you think it's a lie? Is he your brother? Your friend? What do you mean friend somebody you want to marry you are now saying is your friend as if am i lying no sir shebi is your guy now <laughs> hallelujah let's look listen listen let's take this in easy this night i have some serious it's too early to start laughing the message tonight is very serious hallelujah you believe god can heal him right you're a very nice lady. Hold my hands. May God. How many ladies will meet somebody that they like and the person is in the hospital? They will just leave him first and start arranging for the absence. So for her to be able to come out and stand in for him. You believe God will heal him? What's his name? Father, please do a miracle for this gentleman. I use you as a point of contact. May the anointing of the Spirit touch him. And that chain of witchcraft be broken. Anything he eats, he vomits it out. We have to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I use you as a point of contact. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my dear. God is bringing a breakthrough for your family, right? Tonight is not a miracle service, but let me just minister your joys. God is bringing a miracle to your family. And um, I'm seeing you walking, but then I'm seeing like a vehicle just takes you to rush. That speed God is bringing to your life. Father, I pray that this will be, even as you have declared in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I really don't know why. Okay, come. The person with accident, his leg broke. What happened? He she okay do you know why what did they say is wrong with her my dear me I'm, I was I dear her leg broke that's why they said she would stay in the hospital for three months 90 three months this is what I'm telling you you are saying trailer fell. will trailer fall on you and it will not enjoy you this is a miracle she needs because they are going to there are multiple fractures that happen to her father do a miracle and let her get out of that hospital in the name of Jesus and for you may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ why is he out your name is Joyce your ah okay let me just pray honestly let's, let's just pray for her at least you don't come out and get nothing father bless Joyce in the name of Jesus. Sir, you are suffering financially very seriously. You are suffering financially, one. But the second thing is not something I can say here because it will embarrass you. But please, you love Jesus. We will, we will talk, please. It's not something I'll say here. But it must stop in Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying? It must stop. I don't want to embarrass you, sir. But please, if I make the altar call, just come out and I'll pray for you. I'll just lay my hands quickly so we can do tonight's teaching. Gimbia. Who is from Kaduna? What's your name? 
So why are you here? The Lord wants to bring deliverance to a family. Please, just, just let me just do this. I didn't intend doing this. I'm seeing a family, four of them in the family are SS. Four of them. SS. Four of them. The person is somewhere, I don't know if he's inside or outside. Four of them. SS, like genotype. Genotype. And the Lord wants to do a miracle right now. Please, don't sit back there. God wants to do a miracle. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. A miracle for you. God is bringing restoration to you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Please go back. Are you brothers? Where are the other ones? They are not here. Four of you. How many of you are SS? Four. You believe God will do a miracle? Do you believe it? The anointing of the Spirit of God is already on you because you have faith to receive. The power of God is already on you. Breaking Something is leaving you. You must let her go. I tell you, there's, there's no such thing as SS. Believe me. It's a lie. See, that a doctor said it. I'm not against doctors. They are practicing. They are practicing. Practicing. When we say you are practicing, what does that mean? That means you don't have all the answers. They are practicing. There's no such thing as SS. If you are not whole, there is a spirit making it so. If you sit down just saying, I'm okay. No! Machine called this SS. You are watching it right before you. This is witchcraft. There's no such thing. I don't believe it. We have doctors, see doctors all around, but I don't believe it. Just believe me. You must, you don't fight people, but you must contend for a higher spiritual reality. That's the only way you can dominate the limitations of this realm. I say it again. There is no such thing as SS. And I minister right now. I stretch my hands. Anyone here with any blood disease, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Anyone here under the sound of my voice with any blood disease, whether you are aware or not, right now in the name of Jesus, I arrest that spirit wherever it is. I'm not asking you to come out. Wherever you are, in the name that is above all names, I arrest that spirit wherever it is. There are at least three people with this blood disease. It's like a curse in your family. Wherever they are, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I arrest that spirit. We call it in medicine, SS or AS or whatever it is. But we are changing it right now. We are changing it right now by the influence of the Spirit of God inside and outside. Anyone who is a victim of that kind of thing, let it be changed right now. Father, hold my hands. I bring you healing in the name of Jesus right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed of that demonic thing in the name of Jesus, I use both of you as a point of contact to your families. Hallelujah. Goodness, I have to preach. Bring the lady that shouts under the anointing outside. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching a lady outside. A mighty shout. Please bring her inside right now. I want to talk to her. Break every chain. 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 There is power. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every 
The Lord has been doing a great work in your life. But one of the things that the Lord is doing in this season is He's cutting away altars. This is what is happening in your life and in your family. He's breaking them up. Your coming to Koinonia is causing a serious catastrophe in the gates of hell concerning your family. And I pray for you, God will begin to give you dreams. All kinds of strange dreams. Encounters with angels supernatural encounters encounters in the spirit I agree with you and I take authority over everything that does not name the name of Christ let it live your life and let it go forever in the name of Jesus listen let me tell you something whether a service is a miracle service or not it doesn't matter as far as God is concerned for as long as there is something in your life that stops you from enjoying the blessings of the kingdom it must come under attack are we together now we can't say wait until i know that i have a teaching session but you see let me tell you something it is our desire that every time you come here you have an encounter with god hallelujah I'm seen like a bird jumping out of people. This is strange. Just allow me to do my madness for a few minutes. This is like a spirit leaving people from their stomach just flying out. I'm seeing at least five people that this is happening to. Severely right now, at least five people. Five people that this is happening to. Five people. Something just jumping out like a bird. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go. Let it go. In the name that is above all names, let it go right now. Like a bird is living, causing pain and destruction. I command it to live right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. For one, that's what has been causing an infection. I see like an infection, but it goes right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it must leave your body forever. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let's get to the business of the night. This atmosphere is already stirred. hallelujah Revelation chapter 1 last week we began looking at the subject of the unity of the faith we began to explore the body of Christ the ecclesia and we started to examine why we've not been able to attain that position of unity in the body of Christ why divisions why seditions and all kinds of things and um, the Lord granted us the opportunity to look extensively I first and foremost began last week by talking about the concept of divine patterns how that no man is at liberty to choose the method of his pursuit towards spiritual progress there's no such thing as guessing your way around. There is a blueprint. Are we together now? And then it's expected that everyone who aligns to God will follow his predefined blueprint. That means there is a way to seek God such that you will find him. There is a way to become a Christian and to live out your Christian experience such that it becomes fruitful anything outside that pathway will lead to error will lead to apostasy and will lead to a barren christian life and we began to examine the concept of divine patterns there is a way you build ministry you don't build it the way you want there is a pattern 
there is a way you build business you don't build it the way you want there is a way you build family and so the first assignment of every believer who wants to make progress in the spirit is not just to begin to move carelessly but through the illumination of the word of god to search out right the pathways in the spirit that have been earmarked for the delivery of certain kinds of spiritual results if you want the anointing in the spirit there is a pathway that leads to the anointing if you want increase in ministry there is a pathway if you want to walk in financial prosperity there is a pathway the problem with our generation is that we have we are so intellectual and scientific we guess our way around the things that only the word of god can give us information about jesus said i am the way not a way hallelujah the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man scientifically intellectually it says but the end thereof are the ways of death so one of the things that staying under the presence of god does for a christian is that it helps you to cut away all these options you have and guides you to the path that path of righteousness right where you begin to live out in accordance you are no longer a rebel to the principles of the kingdom then you come at peace with creation and everything begins to um, compel on common consistent results in your life praise the Lord so we spoke about divine patterns and um, we rounded off last week discussing three great errors remember three great errors that have crippled the body of christ and um, has fought god's agenda of seeing the church coming to that point the bible calls the unity of faith error number one is apostasy a deviation from the patterns of god a deviation from the truth and i told you that there are two dimensions of apostasy the vessel communicating that apostasy, that deviation, that error can be false and of the devil. Never of God in the first place. Or the individual can be of God but his doctrine is not of God. Are we together now? The Bible talked about a man in the Bible called Demas. Demas was once in the faith but he fell out of the faith and began to communicate things that were not of God. Balaam, the Bible warns in the book of Revelation of the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a true prophet, right? But then there was a progression. It was first an error of Balaam. Then it was a way of Balaam. Then it was a doctrine of Balaam. It started as a mistake. Then it became a pathway to guide others to follow. And then it became a doctrine. The Bible talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. All of these are fabrications from the pit of hell. Many of them... Uh, they were initiated by sincere people with sincere desires but because they guessed their own pathway see the danger when sincerity mixes with error it becomes apostasy because you have passion but your pathway is wrong are we together so someone wants to see breakthrough in their family sincere heart then they go to a herbalist a wrong pathway and then it produces a deviation from God's pattern with severe consequences. So the first error is the error of apostasy. There are many doctrines being taught in church. Many of them have been older than every one of us here. But the foundation of those doctrines are from the pit of hell. The Bible says doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons. People have gone for prayer and fasting gone to several places and not navigating the pathway of the spirit properly they have accessed strange ideas from spirits that a thing is supernatural does not mean is of god supernatural just means outside of the three-dimensional realm there are spheres that influence us beyond the scope of the three-dimensional realm and chances are that anything you see that is superhuman you suddenly call it godly it may be divine in that it is of a force that is greater than that of humans is supernatural being that is outside of the scope of man's reason but that does not mean it is of god the apostle said there is as it were many voices 
and none of them is without effect so that you are having encounters that are extra physical or beyond the physical realm does not mean these encounters are of god apostasy number two indifference that was the second error we considered how that there are people in the body of christ whose scope of passion is not kingdom the scope of their passion is not um is not holistic once an error in the body of christ does not affect their immediate environment they are not concerned are we together now is 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 the error of indifference so they are so conscious of their ego they do not have the courage to confront certain things that have the capacity to destroy the body for as long as it has not affected them in person they are the kinds who will give an a, a testimony like praise the lord i was coming in a car with 30 people and there was an accident but only because I hold Papa's Bible. Every other person died, only me. The God of A and B and C and people clap about it. Not minding that other believers died, which has impeded the capacity for kingdom acceleration. So the, the scope of their pursuit of God is biased, self-centered. Once a thing does not affect them directly, that was the attitude of Esther when she got to the throne. As against that of Mordecai. Mordecai was a gatekeeper with a passion for the salvation of Israel. Are we together now? And God took Esther, Hadassah, to the throne. The purpose was so that she would be a source of influence to rebuke that which Haman was plotting against the nation of Israel. But when she got there, she became carried away by the bounties of royalty. And then... Haman was there plotting the destruction of the nation of Israel. And Mordecai sent her a message. And for a while, she would not pay attention. And this is what Mordecai said. Don't you think? Number one, they don't even know you are a Jew hanging in that palace. Because when they know, they will hang you and kill you in a shameful way. A woman gave chance for you to come here called Vashti. And now God brought you there and you have lost that kingdom view of your purpose of being in the palace so because you are now enjoying the royalties of the palace you do not care if your people die listen if you want to become an effective christian an effective minister your scope must expand beyond the horizon of your ministry and koinonia to think kingdom you must sustain an ability to receive the burden of the corporate church and not just your individual sphere. Now, for the purpose of organization and loyalty, you'll be loyal to whatever God has committed, the ministry, whatever it is he has given you. However, your concern must transcend your personal comfort into seeing that the body of Christ is making progress. No matter how Koinonia is advancing as a ministry, if the body of Christ in Zaria if the body of christ in the north is not making progress if the body of christ in nigeria is not making progress we are not making the kind of kingdom impact god desires are we together as a ministry we may be doing well this is the reason why we travel from region to region spending our lives stretching ourselves we're doing well as a ministry but how about the body of christ that they too may know him so we go to other regions and inconvenience ourselves to make sure that we open them up to the perspectives of God that has been communicated to us and contribute our quota to strengthening the body of Christ within that territory. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And this is one of the, the, the proofs of a true apostolic ministry. The scope of the impact of an apostolic ministry is beyond the platform that is committed to them they they oversee the spiritual progress of a territory not just a ministry hallelujah so if there is a spirit that the devil is bringing over our territory to cause the church to be lukewarm or to begin to cause a particular trait and a manifestation of darkness it is the role of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry to see beyond even if it has not affected koinonia yet we see it and stay it far off and keep the environment conducive for the advancement of the kingdom 
to take place indifference there are so many people who will never come out you ask them um, what is your position on tithing for instance and um, because they are in the presence of somebody who does not believe in tithing they will not want to spoil that relationship by saying tithing is of God but then they, they have their convictions but to be outspoken about the truth they do not want it because they are afraid of losing members are we together they are afraid of losing all kinds of things a man comes to sow one billion into your ministry and you know it's drug money but then because you need the money you would compromise on that chance to show how addicted you are to the precepts of the kingdom are we together now and you collect the drug money and not have the courage to confront him and say no 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 we need money in this ministry but this is we are not this desperate it must be according to the patterns of god and then the last error that has destroyed the body of christ is exaggerated confrontation of apostasy you see the balance now so the first error is apostasy a deviation from the truth the second error is indifference we don't know where you are standing neither here nor there men with no convictions they are not outspoken about anything they are confident about and then number three are those who are cynical and they hate the body of christ they have contributed to causing more pain in the body than victory exaggerated confrontation they are already people who are sadist they have a negative perception about the body are we together now and so anything that happens in the body they interpret it from the lens of jealousy and envy so even when they are communicating what is supposed to be true the foundation upon which that communication is predicated upon is wrong self-centered and biased so for instance if they are trying to say something like um we caught my man with a charm as a man of god we caught him in the meeting i saw him rubbing one powder quickly they take on that case study because they have a bias for the supernatural by default are we together now it's just that they do not have enough fact and figures to convince people to leave the supernatural so when they lay hold on something they capitalize on that one exceptional case and it becomes a foundation of their proposing what is supposed to be a corrective measure but it's a communication of error are we together someone can watch what just happened here now this manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it are we together now and then go to a church where he sees a man of god holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error no sir you see true correction must come from a standpoint of love anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy is bitter envy are we together so those who help in deviating the body of christ from the precepts of god those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction let me tell you something please look up i say this with every sense of humility not every man of god is authorized to correct the body of christ read your bible you don't just stand up and think because you have something to say there is there is a throne there is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of christ it's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you you come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives and now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception hallelujah so let's take it from there and um We'll touch on a few things and pray hallelujah revelation chapter one amen and amen and amen are you blessed verse 12 we'll read from 12 to 15 revelation chapter one 
12 to 15. There are a few thoughts, maybe about four of them, I will share with you on the body of Christ and then we will pray. Okay. And I turned to see the voice. This is John the beloved when he was caught in the Isle of Patmos. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw what? Seven golden candlesticks or lampstands. Next verse. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. Let's just stop there, really. The remaining is just a description. Listen. Where was the Son of Man found? In the midst of the seven lampstands. And those seven lampstands, John himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the catholic church not roman catholic the word catholic means the universal church the ecclesia are we together now god's body the very body of christ this is a powerful revelation because regardless please listen regardless of the error and the confusion and now i know that there's a lot of that regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of God, regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic, God is still in the church. When you want to find where God is on earth, the Bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You will never come to a point where you will not find God in the church. This is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways. Listen, in every assembly, I don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil. If there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of God, for the sake of that one person, God will find a way of manifesting himself in the church. Whether or not he is received. Are we together now? Please listen. Do not carry this idea that God is, is just in some places and not in some places. No, the Bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands. Are we together? You must have this understanding about the body of Christ. So that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people, as angry as you are, there is a consolation. He is still in the midst of the seven lampstands so you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention if you pay attention you will find god this is already a deliverance for someone because if you are looking for a perfect church you will not find one you will find a man of god who is warded but lousy while you are angry with that one, you find the one that loves God, but once in a while he touches beer when there's pressure. Are we together? And then while you are running, you find another one. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of the confusion of the church, Christ is still in the church. So you have your, your predefined, you have your idea about how service should be run. Koinonia is quite organized. If during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here, the protocol will carry you and take you out. We are a bit organized, but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of God will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy. You will go to that kind of church with your cynicism because you want everywhere to be like koinonia. And then you do not have the flexibility to understand that God is not in the church because it is perfect. God is in the church because he is the one perfecting it. Believe this and you will have a very, very open spirit about the body of Christ. There is no way I cannot preach. There is no way I can. If, tell me, um, call, well, I, I don't mention names of men of God, but please permit me to just call one. Call uh, Gurma, that guy, Lagos, about an expert, Gurma Raji, right? If Gurma Raji invites me for dinner, I will go. I won't do it in a secret. I will do it in the open. You will snap me and it will be on Facebook. I will go and eat with you. The person who cut the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than Guru Maharaj. What they did with that cow before you ate it, but just because you didn't see it, you now bought the meat, you didn't pray over it, you boiled the thing and ate it. 
well, you see this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find god listen there is no man who is influenced outside of his will being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man this is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit but you must be conscious of what is within you above and beyond what is around you let me tell you christ is in his body don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing so the, the argument that oh there are people who wear trousers and god is not in this church there are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers they are people of the law god is not in this church these ones are grace people god is there these ones are law people god these ones are old testament christ is everywhere trust me trust me i've gone to too many places and i have wondered and marveled at the presence of god that came there so when i go for a meeting I expect imperfection from the vessels so it doesn't surprise me are we together now I went for a meeting one day and the man of God was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that Kai a Christian should not do you know we men of God once you are carried away especially when you joke and people clap it now you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice I said well god this is your church you are still in your holy temple we fear you but just have mercy on us and my ears was open and i was blessed i was blessed so if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand for instance it was, ah, what am i doing here no let me tell you you can ignore the sand part and pay attention even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson you can learn diligence even if you don't learn anything, you can learn excellence. If the message is not blessing you at all, look at the backdrop. All right, this is a new color. I've not seen you. There's something to learn. Because whatever it is, Christ is in his church. Listen to what I'm telling you and you will be so matured. You will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity. God's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia. That's, that's a dream. If that's what you think we are doing, well, I'm not one of those men of God who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church. It's a dream that God will stop by himself because that's not his idea. I think kingdom. So regardless of my personal contribution, I am also um, of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress, even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed, whether the person was healed from MFM or living faith, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of God to find expression. Are we together now? God is still in the midst of his church. Please listen. Brothers and sisters, God does not use us because we are perfect people. No. Self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary. Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this because of their bias they run churches like their personal organization matthew 16 verse 18 is the second point that i want to communicate it says and i say unto thee listen thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church everybody say god will build his church so who is the builder of the church god never left the building of the church to joshua selman or any other person he himself is the builder of the church imagine if god left the building of the church to me i will first gather all the people who are my tribe is that not what we do are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it 
the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church you are building it because god said i will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail please listen i want you once and for all especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting god for ministry bury this ownership mentality about ministry this is why pastors fight do you fight what is not your own if i want to touch a jimmy's child now is his child are we together now and so he will stand and defend it if i'm touching this flower you may feel bad but it's not your own personally so you have no right to challenge me the decoration department can be angry but at least not you so why do I become so personal if somebody says I don't like koinonia you take it personal because you are the geo you are the builder you will, you will pay for the bills you will manage all the crises there and you will run yourself to an early grave I learned this early in life God if you don't build your church let's be embarrassed together I am just a pipe the way you see let me tell you this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of Christ. Even when the truth has been known. Because everybody is conscious of his own church. So we run, we run ministries like business ventures. I have 2,000 members in my ministry and my church. These are my sons. These are my daughters. They are, everybody is at my beck and call. And then you now try to spiritualize it by saying God is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves i see the way a lot of pastors i mean you see somebody he didn't come to church you almost kill him i didn't see you in church why to mean you reduce the number it's because of you they 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 thought we are, they, they have been writing that we are 50. Now you are the one who is making them think we are 48. You see, that kind of mindset. Listen, listen. I'm speaking to you. If you don't relinquish the, the pressure that ownership brings, it will kill you early. That's why people fight. Hallelujah. That's why people fight. If you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry, you must surrender everything thing to God you see the way we do koinonia the, the workers are aware God forbid but if I die today you only cry for seven days today is what Friday I assure you by Tuesday or Wednesday you'll be used to it ah Posu is dead I'm dead How, I mean what happened this guy even released long life what, what you are saying is irrelevant because I'm gone they will bury me take me my mother will cry all the people they will cry and everybody will be fine when they dump me. that's all i tell you and by next week koinonia continues the only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace i preach enough messages to bless the body of christ but there are pastors the day they miss service everybody will know this service was a mess where are you about pastor where are you listen never have that kind of attitude over the body of christ the best of any member is only an effective member no one person equals the church the 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 recognition of this is equal to wisdom are we together i learned this early and so i let him take the glory he's the one building koinonia and for as long as i allow him to keep building it that's the reason why we do ministry pressure free there's no frowning at everybody frowning at the offering once they are dropping you are now looking you see five naira in the transparent side of the basket you are angry five naira how much is generator how much is this if you if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible oh no 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 get set to kill yourself i'm too young i plan to live very long forget this story about death i told you I have, the I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil 
bomb blast accident etc that's why i can talk about it i scare death to his face and go to bed because death is a spirit it's not one of those touch not no 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 come on ask it The sun will no more give me sunlight by day. The moon will no more give me moonlight by night. Jehovah will be my everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. The light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh climbs up the worms of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Listen, God is the builder of the church. And like every member in the body or the corporate body, you can allow God to build your life. Because your own body, not koinonia, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I allow him to build me into prosperity. I allow him to build me into health. I allow him to build me into increase. I allow him by aligning to him. Every other thing is the work of grace. My own part is alignment through obedience. Are we together? Listen, I'm speaking to someone tonight. Come on to me, Jesus says all ye that are labor and are heavy laden you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustrations there are pastors who before a service starts they will call the department how many people are there now say kite the way it is it's like 80 81 <gasps> i was 81 today that is a convention depression for no reason and i will build my church papa oyedeko was sharing how that when they were dedicating covenant university the lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate are we together now different men of god have their different skills of surrender papa Ia deboy will kneel down once he just goes on stage he will kneel down before everybody which is uh, what they call that thing tambourine Say, look, don't be carried away that I'm among the world's hundred most influential people. I can sing and dance before God. Other people roll on the ground before God. All that they are doing is saying, Lord, let the people see that it is the finger of God, not the brain of a man. Your brain is too small to run ministry. Ministry pressure will blow it into pieces. Hand it over to the all-wise God. Listen, every time you see supernatural things in the church, don't fight it. It is the finger of God. Because most times, the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is, we look at the individuals that God is using. The protocol people are here and they will tell you, most times when we travel for ministration, most people, did you know that over 70% of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me? They don't even know how I look. And I love it, you cannot imagine. We are dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking. They greet Victor, how are you? They greet Mike and then they look at Yerima. Oh, Yerima is quiet. He looks like he's the one. And then I'm there with polos and my earphone and I'm just moving. And then I say, how are you? And I can see the disappointment. We labor to borrow jeep. We labor to do all of these things, to carry this thing. But there is this treasure in earthen vessels listen when you know this no matter how high any result you see is you will not be afraid of it because you can see where the man's limitation stop you know from here it's no longer joshua selman this is the hand of god jesus said if i by the finger of god cast out these demons the kingdom has come to you same thing with honor we're talking with um while the protocol person was driving me eddie was driving me coming we're discussing with him in the car and then i was telling him i said can you imagine how uh what was i even talking about i was talking about honor 
how people crave for honor in the body of Christ once somebody is entering when I was coming I saw the media people chasing me with camera just snapping and I said these, these are the things that kill men of God you snap your way into death unnecessary honor let me tell you something I have found out by experience that honor is a mantle if God has not given you there is nothing that will bring it to your life what someone did that brought honor you would do it and they would trivialize it but when that grace comes no matter what you do and Jabez was more honorable which service did he conduct it was an anointing hallelujah and I will build my church I learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life and it's one of the foundational things that's why when men of God stand and they are bragging, I this and that, my shoe is 50,000, this suit came from this. May I say, Lord, I know how the suit came. It came through favor. Favor. I'm unashamed of the favor of God. Oh, you were smart. Fine. You qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position. I was carried on the wings of grace. I know how I got there. And so I don't become foolish. He is the builder. And so I give him all the glory. I will not say, Lord, you are the builder. Then when it's time for shine, I say, God, this is my moment. Just allow me to serve it. No. To you be all the glory. The reason why we don't give God glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder. The leaders know. Everybody knows. I tell you. That anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength I, I i don't know what will happen to that person maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of god only by the hand of god and not the wisdom of a man he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said no man for no man can do these things except God be with him. Is God with you? And are you allowing him to build your life? Are we together? Say after me, God is building the church. That's why, let me say something. Except for very, very, um, for few exemptions, the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough it's not correctly kingdom because god is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of god will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say lord this bottom in this church i am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um, I don't know if it was palm wine or something I, I can't remember the story now and the fire of God fell upon him he saw a whirlwind like that of Moses and a voice spoke from it he had an encounter and then there were already a group of prophets who refused to endorse him in the ministry and one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session and the guy healed a madman in their presence and the Lord told them this guy is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace that was the only condition that they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him brothers and sisters please let god build your life all this bragging i'm beautiful that's why it's working you will see the limitation of beauty when it is only beauty building your life i'm rich that's why i i i got first class that's why remember last was it last month or month before last when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless how do you explain that please make up your mind for the body of christ and for yourself that from today you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge god in all your ways i'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 6 to seven really that's verse six in all your ways acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct make straight your path my ministry my business 
my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if Sam buys for me, I won't mind. You are still a drunkard. Because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself. He's the one who drinks it. Whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money. An arrogant person. Right? A boastful person. The one that will face destruction from God. Is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory. I'm not saying don't honor people. Don't acknowledge people. I know you love me. You respect me. You honor me. I love you and I honor you too. However, there is a limit. And it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line. There are things people do for me. I say, no, no, this is too much. And I will build my church. If you allow me build it, the gates of hell will not prevail. Say amen. Number three, is God blessing us? Please pray in one minute before we continue and say, Lord, build my life. I've been trying to do this thing in my own strength. Please pray. Trying to enter a relationship by your own strength. You tried makeup, it didn't work. You tried with on, it didn't work. You tried buying designers, it didn't work because it doesn't work by all those things. It takes the mercy of God. Open your mouth and pray. I've tried it by my strength. I've tried succeeding. I've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight. I give it up. I give it up. Please pray. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, if you do not help me, nobody can help me. If you don't take me from where I am to the place of destiny, there is no possibility outside of you. Can you pray? In all your ways, acknowledge you. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let it be a culture in your life. Every time men begin to clap, become an usher. Point them to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. You never see me say, I did this. The power of my might. I, I did this. Do you know every time we finish Koinonia, when I go back home, many times after counseling people, I just, I have one small chair. It's my little altar with God. I just get down on my knees. Sometimes when I come, especially during the miracle service, mighty things that God has done, you know, that's how I can just, sometimes I can, I can stay in that position. And that's how I pass the night. Just acknowledging him. I don't cry before people, but I cry before God. I just sit down and I see his faithfulness. When we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God. And I said, Lord, I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000. Is the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already, this is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio. Right now, connected, listening to me from around the world. During my birthday last year, there were about 16 nations, 16 nations called to say happy birthday. I've not gone to those, almost all of those nations, maybe. But the faithfulness of God. If you learn to acknowledge God, some of you, if God gives you half of the anointing He has given me, your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance. The knees that used to touch the ground, this was how I used to cry in His presence in the night on concrete floor. People are sleeping, and I'm crying and say, God, please, 
if you ever will need to use a man, I'm available. Then I could not afford suit. Now that I can afford it, that suit must rub the ground. Except it's not my own. If it tears, let it tear. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Be lifted high, be lifted high, for your glory be lifted high, in my life be lifted high, be lifted high, for your glory. of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million 1 billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in your place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said, ah, you are pretty. The day they said, lead one small prayer. And two people fell under the anointing. God never saw you again. Ah. This is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit. They cheat themselves out of the place of power. I tell you, this is why the body of Christ may never come into unity. Because of this spirit of pride. I did this. I built the church. I did this. It was by my wisdom. I prophesied and it happened. I spoke to her and she came with triplets. The Bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father. This was the secret of David. David knew the hand of God. He will say, many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say, where is his God? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. That I have not fallen is not a product of my strength. Oh, I'm this. I don't like ladies. Keep quiet and give God all the praise. I'm anointed. I finished three days dry. Come and see what God did in the meeting. Who told you? Who told you? He does these things that men may fear him. Let me tell you something. I show you a secret that will make God foul to keep lifting you. Men may talk. They, their talk, will, they, their saliva will dry from their mouth. But you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. This is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod 
there are people like that i watch preachers on tv and without a sense of cynicism i see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dry money is still coming but it's dried i tell you i've had ministers that i respect so much i've had ministers that i acknowledge the dealings of god in their life speaking recent times and i was shocked how can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body there are people who have been etched out of the program of god because of this pride there are musicians who have left the scene of nigerian gospel music never to come back again because right now if you don't give them 1.5 they will not come you have to talk to multiple pas they've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write it came that day they didn't eat and they were praying and god said let me bless you and he brought one song that opened them up and from that day have you noticed that most of these people any other song they write no matter what they do it will never sell again because it was never about the song it was about the grace there are some of us here please hear me i'm speaking to you i know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around the plane nothing happens because it cabled, the glory has departed i tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when god will lift a man and you now stand and forget the god of your salvation i spoke to a, a man of god one day i used to know that man very interesting then god had not done anything much in his life but i spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor. I could literally smell it with my physical nose. I was talking to him on the phone. There are pastors who until you now have a seat, they forgot how God took them. You want to see Joshua Selman stand here with your 50,000 or your 100,000. Not that God led you to honor. Not that they challenged you in church to sow. They now stand. As you are dropping it in the basket, then you see the man of God. Ah, quarter for me to do that. May God take my life. For what? Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory, be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand. Listen. For the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith. Is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit. Please listen. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Pay attention. There is a difference. Listen. Between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by God on the strength of what he's making you become. Are we together now? We all start our journey into the things of the spirit together. But as we proceed, the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit. Are we together now? And so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry, I'm called into the apostolic ministry. You are called into business. Somewhere along the line, there will be a divergence. The same way students start course, science, whether engineering, medicine, you do the same thing. Are we together? As you progress, what happens? You now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought, that knowledge in you. Now, the trouble is this. Most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line between their personal dealings with god and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with god so that they can be effective 
in dispensing the dimension of God committed to them they they do not draw that line and everything their personal dealing in the spirit they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine are we together now listen Paul said all things are lawful but not all things are expedient are we together now did you know that God can come my dear God can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of God and a man of influence are we together now God can tell her my personal dealing with you you are not going to wear trousers are we together now that is not about wrong or right you are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many and I need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman that is a personalized dealing but by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue you bring error in the body of Christ are we together now there are personal things God can give a man are we together now stringent rules that God has given people it has nothing to do with old and new covenant it is your personal work with God God can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment God can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of the number of children to have God can say because of the enormity of this assignment you cannot have more than two children if you like have eight but at my recommendation for efficiency is two it's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children to say Lord for your glory if you are lonely after two you buy a puppy but anything outside that you position yourself are we together God can say because of where I'm lifting you you cannot have three cars at any given point people who sow 20 cars find the best three and give the rest out and people they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit it's not something there are things that God has given me like personal rules it's in the Bible Samson was given a code they said Samson the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair you are a Nazarene separate unto God let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bow and Delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair barbed the hair and barbed the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when I see the way many ministers are careless I'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of God that were given to you there are agreements that I had with God I've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the Lord gave me an instruction I put hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the Lord said I should pray as I'm matching it that's how I kept matching it I was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will I tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of God given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong but God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you. Somebody like Papa Adeboe, his covenant with God was that every time somebody before like you worship God, Papa he would go down Adeboe on his knees. His covenant Are we together now? Whether in London, before like Obama, God, before anybody, he would do this. Are we together? Are we together now? Whether in London. There are people because of their covenant with God they will never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited for many years many years I wanted to buy a car God stopped me I don't know how many times there are times I've smiled thinking I just went to God oh God I like this no way 
will I stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you God didn't direct you and it took <laughs> what is your dealing with God there is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God hmm. it was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place and he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say, ah, William Branham, whereas he's a spirit. God is warning you. The atmosphere of God's glory is causing a spirit to react. Instead of you to cry for help, you are there rejoicing that you are growing. Listen, it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual presence and bring it as a sign, just like the example I shared. Did you know that there are ladies that God will give them rules? no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me are we together listen if you love the lord there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him Hallelujah. It is lack of this separation between personal dealings. I've done all kinds of crazy things with God, but I cannot bring it as a doctrine. I, I stopped sharing my experiences. The only experience that most people have had is my encounter with Jesus. There are many more, but I will not share it because these are personal dealings. And if you are not careful, when you begin to share it, it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god hallelujah so many altars today many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church if geo does not eat salt because god suspected that he may have high blood pressure and god before that time you see that just a simple rule now he will now add it if you eat salt in that church you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told paul kill and eat answer me who told when when remember those unclean animals pig everything when it came down ah peter said like jesus me too and Jesus ah, I had to do you are not going to the cross I know what I was doing he said kill and eat he didn't say just kill and look at it kill and eat listen you can see two people they will do the same thing God will keep quiet over somebody but for the other person God will say let's go back to the secret place I are saying God me again everybody is praying for one, one hour God is letting them you pray for four hours god is saying you are not being serious and you are like god what is this watch this you don't compare your work with god with what is happening to the other person there is a template air marked for you based on what god is doing in you and based on where god is taking you to separate doctrines a good pastor will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some points but the message cannot be hinged 
upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing imagine teaching you now you say thank god i always knew that this is my not having appetite to read the bible is not backsliding i've been looking for an excuse even apostle don't say that to us i'm even saying it now warning you it was because god i was in a season of my life where god was teaching me certain things are we together now and god was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it and the lord began to tell me that i am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong's concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to clean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry i hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. personalized dealings God can give you dealings food clothes the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we'll pray is god blessing us today hmm. romans chapter 12 from verse 3 we'll read the a part and establish the last point and then we'll pray thank you jesus romans 12 verse 3 for i say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen the bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct 
but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the lord and our human opinions please write it down the inability for ministries pastors to separate between thus saith the lord a prophetic word coming from god and the sincere opinion of a man a combination of his exposure his intelligence please look up there are many churches today that even if the man of god coughs people say yes lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, pray we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of god are we together we do not know that the holy spirit is not a fool there are many times paul will speak and say i speak as a man this is my opinion my frank intellectual analysis on this issue because you see we we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the the words of the man of god came directly from god what has this led in the body people refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion i can look at a lady come mama i can look at mama now are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh if you have been praying i think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen i'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen <laughs> hallelujah oh yes ah he knows what he's here in koinonia to receive are we together now so i am listen listen i'm telling him sincerely oh look at this lady we have all watched her in koinonia she loves god she's a serious lady she's serious if god is sending you to a ministry this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of god you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god 
is demanding your Isaac. I'm telling you now, my polite proposal is better than an armed robber's gun. Think about it. That's not prophecy. That's a threat. You are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it. Otherwise, armed robbers will come. And truly, if armed robbers come one day, you say, ah, this man is a man of God. No, he's not a man of God. That's not the reason why armed robbers came. Listen. Every pastor and man of God here, listen. We owe God accountability. You know, years ago, I didn't used to know the, if, the effect of my words on people. I used to think when I just speak to people carelessly, it won't mean anything to them. But as I kept growing in leadership, I got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father. It makes impact. You can look at a lady right now and say, I'm proud of you. Just that little step. To you, it's no big deal. But that will be the basis of her seriousness in the spirit. Ah, ah. Joshua Selman said he's proud of me. Ah, out of everybody in Koinonia. Because to you, it's no big deal because you are used to being celebrated. To someone who has never received a comment from somebody. The same way you look at somebody and say, you're a bad girl. You were joking. And the lady is crying for one week. Oh God, I repent. Wrong words we have not separated thus saith the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly god has not told me anything about this issue however let's look at it from the bible okay this is what you are doing no the bible prohibits this try this take it this way and then sometimes in the midst of it god will speak expressly and i'll say this is the word of the lord to you and when i think what i said was of god if i later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason i didn't hear well i will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of God spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of Christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake he say are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 that dimension now is not of God once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because it was a man of God that said so? You must marry so 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 and so person. Now he married the lady and he doesn't know what to do with her. And they are all angry and they are confused. And the man of God is there. I know men of God who have looked at people and say, Relocate. You shouldn't be doing anything in Nigeria. And sincerely, he just perceived in his spirit that this guy should be abroad. He now said, Go to Kenya. The guy is living like a, a fugitive in Kenya. Whereas he was living with authority. He sold his house, sold everything and left. Could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of God that has kept you limited? You wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any, any business doing any business. Right? And now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he says, you have the courage to come and enter my gate. The next time you come, I will call police and they will catch you. And you go back disappointed. Oh God, did you not speak to me? 
I refuse to be a fool. I refuse to let the pursuit of God look like stupidity. Whenever there is no direct word from the Lord, I walk with the principles of the word. How many men of God were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them? I know pastors who have no business having churches. They are not supposed to open churches. But they went and met a man of God. Now the man may not be wrong, but he spoke a word. He said, I'm looking at you and I see 17 branches. God is giving you speed. The guy started dying. The money that God allocated for the program, he now started spreading 17 branches around. And now he's killing him. Weekly budget, 2.5. Whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500,000. Where is he going to get the other money from? So he starts lying. He starts creating a prophecy session. Drop your 30,000 I speak to you. That's what has led men of God into all of these things because of pressure. Separate between the word of the Lord directly. See? And a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom. There are times I prepare a message. Not that God told me necessarily. I sat down as a leader. I understand how to build people. I know that if you have a ministry with people, you must build them in the area of spiritual growth, build them in character, build them in finances, family life, leadership, interpersonal skills. These are things that are, we, we are human beings. God does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the word has taught me that you must build people holistically. There are times I come on stage here and God completely from everything I've planned. That does not mean he did not give the inspiration. But at this current time, this is what he wants to be said. And I'm unashamed. I drop it. There are times I come here and I tell you, this is what the Lord spoke to me. This word came from God. This is what he wants us to do. It is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names dio uh shegu who and who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys i said no 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 god has not told me anything i don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here, especially some of us who are just starting in ministry. You are under pressure. When you get that kind of text, you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on Dio and you send back, say Dio, I hear Dio. And now the lady, and maybe Dio is not even born again. You now pin this lady with this, this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward. I deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a man of God who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business and he says no this is not of God he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from God. So right now, brothers, let me just buttress on this point. But brothers cannot come and meet a lady. You can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her, oh, you love God. You have to start saying, look, it was by 241, between 241 or 242. Uh, sorry, I was dragging you. Abby. Around 241 or 242, I was just strolling around somewhere. And I saw what looked like a vision. I said, Lord, is this you? And he was silent. Now, the lady is standing and wondering, what's this guy saying now? Of course, she knows where you are going to. And he says, look, on a very good day, me, I'm just minding my business, but how can I be negligent of this heavenly call now that I've seen this call? And now the lady wants to say no, but she has been threatened by what? A vision. God said, you are my wife. I'm not saying... Go and think about it. What is the answer? The lady said, well, it's too early. I don't know you. Is this what you are saying? Me too. Do I know the vision? I, I saw it. I, ah. As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template. The only way 
many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady they just come and say what did, are you still wasting my time or I plan to marry based on what God told me he showed me July are you doing this thing or not let's just know and it keeps backfiring again and again and again because you see the laws of the spirit are unemotional this again is also the reason why people are confused and let me just touch on this and then we'll pray today you go to bed and you see Amaka bless you darling tomorrow as soon as you wake up you see Shalhoma you are washing your face and you saw her face and say I reject it you saw it again are we together now next week you now see Martha and then the individual is he sincere yes is she sincere yes but because you have tied your your paradigm are we together now to only visions you are confused you saw seven sisters in one week you are not a bad brother but you are seriously confused you can see me come matter you can see me wearing suit and matter dress like this it can mean intimacy not marriage you have to go back to god to find out what he's saying that you saw what looked like suit does not mean it's marriage A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books. Please, um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read. Written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married. And now be looking at a lady and then another prophet to come and say well i don't know how to tell you this thing but this lady you are married although you are 10 years in marriage she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward i stand as a prophet of god to declare to you is there a lady called jane in koinonia he said yes yes ma'am I'm, I'm. i said leave your wife go to jane now the man will not leave her in one day but automatically he was not eating her food again and then he now calls jane 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 how now how was service today then he said fine daddy he said why must you call me daddy <laughs> it has it has started i will talk oh, my name is joshua selman <laughs> and the wife is surprised He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding sharp sharp? And he's planning on leaving his wife because somebody said, thus saith the Lord. And in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands and because he tells you something that is true, then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of god spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways God directs men. He can say start and he can say stop. So if he doesn't say anything, start. I need to address this. Thus saith the Lord has destroyed a lot of people. So we have gotten into all kinds of things. Thank you, my dear. I went to pray for a woman some years ago. God is my witness. I saw over 21 anointing oils. And this 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets. 21. None of them was free. By the way, not one was free. She went to one woman, one prophetess. I, I was told that if you go to the woman's place, now I'm not criticizing. Maybe the woman is listening to the message. Hallelujah. And then the woman said, you have to camp in her hostel. You must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill 
no 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 don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if i have a ministry wouldn't i want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle Ben's or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of God have supposedly put an embargo. Haba. You want to take your children to a good school. But the man of God has said, if it's not my school, except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened, I set you free. I deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom. Marry me or you die. You say, oh, no problem. I'm already dead. You don't threaten me. I marry because of love, not force. If you are in a hurry, go and find somebody and go and meet the parents. We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money. No problem. God designed a system to honor you. Don't tell lies and threaten the people. For when God speaks, there is grace for performance. There are many angry people. You see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come, Koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths. And when it happens, people will say, pastor, my money. Because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear or favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when i come and say the lord instructs even when god commanded elijah he didn't go to one and say god has said it did you hear bring food he said madam bring food for me Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God. Because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the course remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves because of their violation of kingdom principles we are going to pray Ephesians chapter 4 says 
it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you i'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you your various churches whether here or at home you have men of god that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able so number one i spoke about the fact that god is always in the church i'm doing a review everyone say god is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections god is always in the church when you go to church look for god don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for god don't look for dress code when you go to church look for god not a man's ability to speak good english or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find God if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there I am not by proxy in their midst number two God is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with God and the doctrines that God commits unto you your personal dealings with God may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what God is telling them number four separate between thus saith the Lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the word of God but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when God speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from God if I perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray I'd like you to please participate in the prayer I thought I would have time to round off with Psalm 133 a mystery God showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but I think we've had enough listen to me Jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free he says therefore if the son of man sets you free you are free indeed many of us have been saved but we are not free because of these things and we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of christ 
with these points that I've shared. Pride. Claiming everything that is done is from you. Or criticizing ministries. You call a ministry and say, this ministry, they are not anointed. They don't even have rema. There's no revelation in this ministry. There are books God wants you to read. And you feel I've left this man far. Papa Ia Deboe comes for a crusade. And you cannot attend. Because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing. This man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school. When you search for God, you will find him in every church. Take my word for it. When you search for God, the God that I serve, he's not just in your church. He's not just in Koinonia. When you search for him, you will find him. He was found in prisons. He was found in different places in the Bible. I choose to seek God, not the perfection of men. I choose to seek God, not the dexterity of ministries. I choose to seek God. When I go for a, min a meeting, I ignore the mistakes of the man of God. I ignore the limitations. I see his disalignments here and there, but I sustain a spirit of maturity. Did you know, brothers and sisters, and I say this with all humility, we are praying. I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations. I think I was sharing with you, was it some weeks ago? One of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true, they were not a lie. So when they said all these things to me I had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it, it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is I mean if you count the men of God in this country maybe the first 10 he will, he will be among them repeatedly but I told them something I said listen I'm not justifying the things the man of God is doing but I can tell you authoritatively, he's still a man of God. Whether you choose to disbelieve him or not, I will build my church. If he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections, he has God alone to face. But as far as the building of the church is concerned, Christ alone must be glorified. Do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say and I know they carry something that I need so I ignore all of those things there are men of God who are very careless I ignore their carelessness and I pay attention there are men of God who are very vulnerable when you look at them, you don't know what they can do. But I ignore those things and I pay attention. There are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry. I ignore all of those things. I have had a passion to find God. That's why I find him everywhere. It doesn't matter where I look. I find him. You stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection. In a man of God, in koinonia, in your ministry. You, search, you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book. You started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong. And it stops blessing you. Oh, 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 oh. Number one, I like you to pray and say, Lord, 
help me that everywhere I go in the body of Christ let me search for Jesus not perfection lift your voice and pray a seeker of Jesus not perfection a seeker of Jesus man may be imperfect man may not have the excellence you are looking for they may not have the organization you are looking for but can you find Jesus in your church can you find Jesus in your pastor can you find Jesus in the church in Zaria can you find Jesus in the church in the north can you find Jesus in the church in Nigeria yes I know there are manipulations yes I know there are wrong prophecies I know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft I know there are people whose God is their belly but can you find Jesus in the church lift your voice and pray Lord I take away that attitude of cynicism I take away that attitude of resentment I take away that attitude of self-centeredness I search for Jesus in every church I search for Jesus in the Catholic Church I search for Jesus in MFM in living faith in deeper life I search for Jesus hallelujah prayer point number two Lord I relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me I lift my eyes from today on you alone and I will never lean on my own understanding lift your voice and pray father I repent for making men look at me instead of you I repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you are we praying pray Lord I've not used my beauty to direct men to the king I've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king I have a passion for being celebrated to a default to a point where I don't care if my king is exalted or not lift your voice and pray let pride die in my life let fame glory die in my life hallelujah hallelujah we'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together we're going to pray and say lord i pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what I'm suggesting to them lift your voice and pray Lord in any way I've confused people bring direction to them are we praying in koinonia Lord I pray for the millions that submit to the grace of God upon my life and believe in the word of God upon my mouth may I never mislead them as a result of my ego oh may i not say god is saying when you are not speaking may i have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the lord i receive grace not to put men in bondage i receive grace not to yoke men i receive grace to separate my personal feelings from that which you want to tell the body Hallelujah. 
hallelujah the last prayer point we're going to pray sorry there's no time one of the blessings of the body of christ is the ability to contact the corporate anointing listen let me tell you something it's called the power of a corporate life let me just share this mystery give me one minute listen if there is a dimension that i need to step into a new level of prosperity or grace but because of my personal dealings with god i have not yet learned how to align the holy spirit so that i can make that possibility at work in life i can take advantage of a jimmy's deadness and enter that dimension are we together now? the reason why when one person opens it to the body everybody starts entering it's called power of a corporate life there yeah. the oil comes the head of aaron but does not stop there any boat connected to that spiritual tribe that family they become partakers of that grace so all it takes but that's the beauty everybody does not have to open every door by themselves so you call the door you have opened from your secret place i come the door i've opened from my secret place in worship there is a meaning i leave that meeting with a grave i never would have anything some of you by watching the worship team something was calling your music ministry you had the grace but you didn't have the ability to write songs but now somebody the grace to write songs started singing and that spirit fell upon you right now there are people who were not songwriters but because they were able to tap into the grace are we together now there are people that revelation and that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication but you were able to when you keep for colonia and then you started attending the meetings and then you went to the prayer but something happened to you you contacted the spirit of prayer and application now you can run eight hours you're stretching in the spirit seven hours and it's like you just detaching it there is a grace that makes it happen are we together you can begin to from in the night and pray till 12 in the afternoon and it does not tell because the power of the corporate anointing has come up there are people who do not have the appetite for excellence they do not have the recognition of it but once you come to a mystery all of a sudden as a pastor you start noticing and in koinonia nobody said it's now time for offering and then people clap and you say wow there can be a way you are not just seeing there is a spirit behind it and that spirit comes upon you and all of a sudden you find out that it begins to affect the area of your life the day you organize a meeting you will see yourself reproducing koinonia that's that you will know how much you have carried the grace there are some of you here you are music ministers the day you go to minister somewhere you will be shocked you will think you are in koinonia all of a sudden you will see graces that's what happened to a lot of pastors some of them just visited they just came and sat down i didn't even prophesy to them they just got up and went back to their meetings and they were surprised listen let me tell you the shocking thing when they went to their when they came for koinonia their keyboard did not follow them are we together their leaders did not follow them but because of the anointing they came with all their leaders started behaving the way the leaders behave in that ministry is an anointing is called the power of a corporate life you enter into realms that your personal alignment would not have afforded you to enter on the strength of unity i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back i have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turn. Take my hand. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. No man forsake me, still I will follow, no turning back, hey, no turning back. No man forsake me. Till I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Come on.
and sing it before him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hey, I have decided It's a costly assumption to assume tonight that everybody wants to follow Jesus. He said, I've, I've discovered that there are people who genuinely are not interested in following God. I'm not talking of self-perfection. I'm talking of a sincere committal to following Jesus genuinely with your life. No way. There are many parasites of Jesus financial parasites of jesus there are parasites of kingdom principles they want to use kingdom principles and mysteries as a ladder to become famous sir it doesn't work that way oh please hear me tonight there are people every time you hear a man of god talk about passion for jesus you think they are talking about ordination to ministry no sir is an addiction to see his kingdom come for god's sake what else will i be doing with my life if not lifting up his name jesus i lift up your name jesus i lift up your name that's what i do for a living jesus i lift up your name Time to lift your voice and say, I lift up your name. If God cannot find his purposes fulfilled through your life, I tell you, forget about the outstretched hand of God. You hear me say this, don't let any man fool you. God is not a herbalist my brother is your heart god is looking for not tight not offering your heart not music not just energy my soul give me your heart give me your heart give me your heart i want your heart when we talk about jesus christ many people frown their face as if you are speaking against civilization the days that will come please hear me people of god the days that will come will require outspoken radical passion for jesus all this organized civilized nonsense that makes god look secondary will be the recipe for the dominion of darkness over the life of people oh i'm now 25 years don't don't make me look like a child i'm now 30 years I hope you know I'm now the director of A and B and C nonsense. And that's the reason why you are. David danced before God. And his wife said, Habba king. And keep your dignity. And David looked at her and said, hold on. You don't even know the mystery of how you became my wife. If you know it, you will join me dancing. I was a little boy with no hope, no destiny. Did he read any book? I was a smelly shepherd in the wilderness. I danced my way beyond any king to get to the throne. And now because I am here, you carry your dignity. The Bible says God had him all. And that woman died barren. It was not the devil that made her barren. Let my people go. Not that they may go around causing trouble and wasting time and just counting age and growing older let my people go that they may go and serve me this issue of living for jesus serving jesus no let bless him accepting him into your heart there are many people when you talk about genuine surrender not coming out to recite an altar call i make up my mind i am for jesus forever they laugh at you They laugh at you because it doesn't make sense to them they don't see the need why should i give my life to jesus 
I want to be the God of my own self. So you manage your life by yourself. I want to be the God of my own self. So you answer your prayer by yourself. I want to be the God of my own self. So you mismanage your life by yourself. It says submit down to the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil and he will flee. You know, I sincerely see a lot of people, great men and women of God who want to walk in the anointing and I see the way they play games with submitting to the authority of Christ. You will never be trusted with certain dimensions of the anointing until God vets your passion. You can't fake it. There is a level of kingdom influence and power. No, it go to a harbor list, you will still not get that dimension. It takes your heart dead to Christ, not just living. This one you have died to the purposes of the kingdom, otherwise, you cannot carry certain levels of grace. No, the kingdom has rules. You you can fake it with men, but not with God. There is a dimension, brothers and sisters where god vets your heart and sees that pastor femi will live and die for me i'm not it's not one leg in today and god is not sure what you will become in 2019 no no please sit down listen to me everyone inside outside the overflows along the road listen I want to make a serious altar call now everybody sit down and listen carefully let me tell you something brothers and sisters coming to surrender your heart to Jesus is not an initiation into a religion called Christianity now are we together now where you are switching founders from an idol worshiper you were worshiping stone are we together and now you say Kai, stone is not a better alternative so i come to another founder there are not ten gods there is one god hear ye O israel the lord our god is one god i don't care who preaches what there is only one god the king eternal we can argue it but one day very soon the difference will be made clear there are people seated here listening to me i don't condemn you but brothers and sisters it's time to be serious with god shortly you're going to experience radical deliverances and healings and miracles but that is only useful when your heart is with god i don't care whether you have been a pastor for 10 years there are two altar calls i'm going to make in one right now please hear me carefully those following us online from any nation you're following just listen carefully you may not be able to run out but i want you to pay attention and participate number one there are people for you you have never made a genuine decision you have heard that people repent you have heard that people come to jesus you have even given them transport money but genuinely from your heart my father is a pastor that's not what i'm saying i grew up in a church you are joking you have to come genuinely we gave our lives to christ it's not an inheritance of a family you come personally the other day they blessed all of us together you are not born again it has to be genuine personal and conscious when i was a baby they baptized me come and join them as soon as i made that altar call you come and join them are we together number two there are those who the war of passion and seriousness with god there is this fear of getting serious with god for some reason you think if i get serious with god my, i won't make it in life the moment i'm serious with god i won't get a nice husband uh, men these days don't like serious ladies who, who lie to you which men which one are you talking about the drunk are there the smoke are there 
or a genuine Holy Ghost born again visionary brother if I'm serious with God when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that God cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it Elijah said I'm the only one God said keep quiet there are 7,000 others who have not bowed to bear please hear me there are people here God wants to visit your family but there is no one in your family who is born again and you will be the first tonight because God needs an access point to your family the system of the kingdom is such that God must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory if and when God does not find a man his power is still limited there must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of God find expression so if God wants to come to your family he moves everywhere and everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm too busy he comes to your mother she says I'm too busy looking for money he comes to your father I'm too confused to give my life to you comes to your brother no I'm, I'm too I'm too I want to marry now God please go somewhere he comes to your sister I'm looking for men there's no time to look for God and God says I want to step into this family no one has given me space if God can find one person he, he needs to take it step by step when he finds you the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one and before you know it someone starts having a strange dream in your family he lies down and he has a dream of rapture he won't share it but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it he would get up alone and you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to Jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the Spirit of God you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of God to grow this dilly darling with God is the recipe for failure I'm too young to reject God the fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God before we continue tonight I'm going to count one to ten listen everyone heard me loud and clear overflow outside overflow along the road as I'm speaking to you the Holy Ghost is probing you those of you standing on the fence there I see you and the Lord is speaking to you online probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world and you are saying but I'm far distance is no barrier it doesn't matter you are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in london whether you are wherever i'm going to make this altar call now i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to jesus i know you will be healed young and old i don't care how long you have been you are saying lord i'm tired of living my life the way i want i want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one Genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain. Two. Mina Yesu ne bazanko ma bazanko ma so keep coming don't say there's no space even if you have to line up outside no problem this is your salvation with god
greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up there right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle i'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that i've not declared jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus lord i'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and i know it my mother is not saved i know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure i know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved lord i know that pastor is not saved he has a church but he's not saved pray cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you're going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart it says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the lord wants to give you a new beginning i know you came to be healed but he wants to take over your destiny with your hands lifted to jesus who is here not in heaven right here in this place say after me passionately and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i have heard your word and i make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days i will live for you i will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night i hand over my life to you say it again i hand over my life to you be my lord be my savior i declare that the power of sin of satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of god i am separated from them this night i declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god 
and I will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted Jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and Lord I decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight none will be lost I speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today I declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation will roll it away right now in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven by the mercies of God I declare that you have a new beginning with God you are empowered by the Spirit to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone I'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what I want you to do um, protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth i don't want you to waste this experience praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus and shortly the lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah Please coordinate them coordinate them let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life I never see anyone like you I never see anyone like you hey, I never see anyone like you I never see Sam, help me I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like I never see anyone like you. I never see I never see anyone like I never see
Please, everyone, stand up. Let's pray some prayers before. Let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people. Everyone, say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say, be serious in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, visit me. Visit my destiny. Give me strange results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me in the name of Jesus. Visit me. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again in the name of Jesus. Every long-standing issue in my life and my destiny, I declare that you must give way tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Long-standing challenges. Are you praying tonight? Long standing issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold a hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any fool shall agree, as touching, believe in what you are saying, you are opening doors. Pray, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father. Tonight. Take away shame. Take away mockery. From my life. My family. And my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit 
behind the tragedies in my life in my destiny and my family expose them tonight lift your voice and pray for the light shines in darkness pray for the light shines in darkness let your light shine, O God. Pray. Hey. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord. Let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me, change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives, come my dear, when a spirit listen carefully when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry 
I prayed over the father's picture. I've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that, but you could look at the leg and see the bone. The bone, the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone. What happened to the man? He went to bed in the night. Brothers and sisters, I think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. You want to move forward but there is an embargo. The solution is not counseling. You need an encounter with power. Everybody say power. Listen, the power of the Holy Spirit is not a negotiator. It's an enforcer. When the power of God comes, it does not ask you whether you want to be free. Your assignment is to be open till it reaches you. When it comes, it scatters anything that does not look like God. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. I will pray for you now. The Spirit of God is upon me. Lift your hands, everyone. There are people here right now. I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out. Usher's grace for you and protocol. I know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road. But I want to pray. Everyone, please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people right now in your silence. Hold on. Maybe just this. The power of God will begin to come upon you. What is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance. That deliverance is equal to breakthrough, equal to new levels. But lift your hands. There are people here who are under strong yokes of delay. And the Lord gives me an instruction. We will just lift our hands and be silent. That's all the instruction. And inside and outside, the Spirit of God will begin to locate them. Are we together? When that happens, then we'll take it off from there. That's the first thing God wants to do tonight. Just lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. And there are people and families and those following on, online. Except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay. That spirit must leave you. Are we together? So keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wherever they are right now, I stretch my hands. According to the instructions you have given me, inside and outside. Right now, I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay. Keep your hands lifted. Shalakataya. Bring them out. Outside. There. Just the angels of the Lord are walking. I'm seeing like smoke. Just moving across lines. Line by line. Inside and outside. When it comes to you. When you are under that influence. That's the end of it. Right now. I command it. The word of the Lord is upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus. No instruments. Don't play anything. Outside. There is massive deliverance happening. Separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it Bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside kai my god 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 
many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken go now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction god gave me that grace breaking chains now i'm speaking across the congregation i have been seeing this for weeks padlocks opening in the realm of the spirit that's what the lord is showing me padlocks opening 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 right now I open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is all over me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fire is coming on 32 people, and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars. I hear family altars right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three. I set those altars now on fire. Right now, 32 people. I see in the realm of the spirit. I command it right now. I command it. Everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar now be free now help them please help that lady be free now so right now be free now be free now Your influence is all over me. I'm under 
just a shadow of your own. Everyone, lift your hands. Say this after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it seriously. Say in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction, hear the word of the Lord. As I shout the name Jesus, I command you to live my life. At the count of three, shout Jesus. There will be an exiting of many strange spirits. One, two, three, shout it. I command spirits, you go now. You go now. You go now. You go now. Inside and outside. Any spirit resident within any man's life, any woman's life, causing pain. Help me say. Hallelujah. Ushers, I pray for grace for you in Jesus' name. Because what I see now is not a nice scene. The Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus. There are people who are going to vomit physical things. That's why I said it's a messy scene. I, I apologize. We're very neat and organized people inside and outside. But in the name of Jesus right now, any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now. One, two, three. I command every stranger. Go now. Every poison. Every devil. Causing sicknesses. Every fibroid. Every devil. Every enchantment. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice, and they are giving somebody everybody a substance, like a drink, something to take. They gave everybody, including you, and you took it. Where is that person? Please, if you're here, I want you to come out quickly. It's a is a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody. Where are you? Come. Your deliverance comes now. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all upon me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother i don't know they brought somebody and you people entered a covenant and they gave you something hold my hands shout jesus, jesus. i command that covenant jesus. that demonic thing tie your life and this miracle service it lives now in the name of jesus you too where are you from i'm from kogi state you are from kogi state the same thing hold my hands look at me I command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if i don't call your case are you part of them mr man young man you're part of them in the name of jesus i set you free bring the, you, you two come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out i'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family 
the Lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep her where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks eh? three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too ah substance your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance lift your hands lift your hands lift both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this do you know what i just saw the lord opened my eyes and i saw like a cage and in the cage i saw snakes that's all i'm seeing that's all i'm seeing lift your hands everybody the lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands. In the name of Jesus, please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. Be out of that cage now. I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now. Now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty. 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 Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Like J A N E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kazachat. Kazachat. Is it Kazachat? Who is that? Kazachat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kazachat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kazachat. Is it, I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom, is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom, Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are, why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. Except for you, I don't even know why it's you. 
the rest of you are but please i want you to believe the moment i lay my hands on you something will happen the lord is saying i should start with you lord open her door now in the name of jesus christ hold my hands reproach leaves your life now in the name of jesus christ reproach leaves your life now by the power of the holy ghost reproach leaves your life now reproach leaves your life now hold my hands call your parents and tell them the lord is giving them breakthrough your family your entire family delta state breakthrough right now in the name of jesus christ hold on. the serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands lord the lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the lord is asking me to do walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of jesus christ lift your hands this girl lift your hands where you are i'm seeing wind around you and the lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said his restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them receive it right now wherever you are Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende kata le kate pras kata baratu shubre diara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. 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 The Lord is stepping into his life right now. Seth. Is there someone with that name? Seth. Have you found the mama I'm talking about? Don't worry, let them come. Let them come. Doesn't matter. With your daughter. Mama. Kai. There is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, Mama? I came from Edo State. From Edo State? Yes, but I live in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa? Yes. But you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth. You too? You are an usher? Okay. I, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took what's the name of this thing they take? We we and you were high. You were about to cross the road, and then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it, just running and killing you. There is somebody here you smoke please don't be there's nothing to be embarrassed about it's not like you are not a serious person but this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life you want to be free but you can't leave it please don't be ashamed come out now quickly please if you are still thinking about it remain on your seat some you have to be free now come out i'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt I don't know if it's your shirt, it's jeans. Who is that? No, no. There, there's another. Come out. I will pray for you. 
this this is not the only guy just keep them here i will pray for him i'm seeing another person outside the second overflow you are standing on the road the spirit of god is speaking to you speaking to you this thing they roll and they smoke and then you even i'm seeing you swallowing a drug i don't know what drug is that please come out come out clap for them as they come out join them quickly and come whether i mention your case or not you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction india hem whatever forward march come here your salvation come sir please appreciate them clap for them some of them are not bad people it's a spirit don't be ashamed please usher uh, direct them so that they come here i'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we we codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can no one will keep coming the devil is a liar who can stand against our king no one can, no one will. Oh, 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 please hold on please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here i know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people i'm seeing a number of ladies up to five ladies they are refusing to come out there's nothing to be embarrassed jesus christ wants to set you free this is a miracle service it's not like you have evil people that's not what we're saying it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian, what do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got to test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's, it's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now. Assuming a brother has been trusting God to marry this sister. Do you think the brother will marry her? Please help me. Do you think he will marry her? You look at her now. And you think she's five or six months pregnant. But she's not pregnant. Kai. There is a lady who has refused to come out. The power of God is going to come upon her outside. You are supposed to be part of those who... Will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about 
I'm, I'm asking you to come out God wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of God is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the Lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles yes, I have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam I will pray for you mama yeah I'm okay you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord bringing restoration to your life this is what i am seeing and the lord is asking me to pray for you can i pray for you ma'am i will pray for you I have to pray i'm seeing not you but i'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident traveling to abuja and having an accident we have to pray i'm not saying it will happen once god reveals it is broken lord jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of jesus christ we avert death by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama. Is there a name like Gracilda? Is it Gracilda or Gracilda? Gracilda or Gracilda. Something like that. Gracilda, Gracilda. Something like that. If that sounds like your name, I'm sorry if I don't mention it well. The Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Grisilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come out. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria. I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand anybody that is not designed by god i separate you and him forever say amen in jesus name gracilda gracilda i'm hearing gracilda something Hilda. please if it's not you no problem but that's what i'm hearing mama let's pray in the name of jesus christ i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit new beginning for you hold up please in the name of jesus christ my dear lay your hands on your stomach kai Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies, you are inside here. There is an embargo of barrenness on your family. Fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo. You don't even know. It's in your family, it may not be in your life. But I'm seeing it right now. The angel of the Lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo. Thank you, Father. I put the word of God upon this prophetic word. That embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you mama I decree and declare let hardship live your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus hold on I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance the power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place this is somebody's deliverance this is somebody's deliverance Lord set them free right now right now right now I'm seeing something rolling around this row this row this row this row shala sobaria taska bandabria legetege bashara toska bredia there's no hiding there's no hiding someone in this row someone in this row someone in this row hardship over your family is being broken right now i'm stretching my hands this row right there father locate that person right now right now right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ mama come i want you to rejoice look at me the lord hold on the lord is saying i should tell you that where you have been crying you will begin to laugh you have been crying for 30 years and the lord is saying your breakthrough has come in the name of the lord jesus christ please shoot for me come madam hold my hands the lord is there and she tell you it's your season of laughter in the name of jesus christ your season of laughter your season of laughter look at me lose her hands now lose her hands now lose her hands now in the name of jesus christ let her hands be loose your hands are tied i lose your hands in the realm of the spirit in the name of jesus christ open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the lord is saying open doors the lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you are a small girl but the things you know and what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for these gentlemen before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my colleague meduguri you are meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you huh eh? but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you hi you're a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your cross up look at this look at this look at this walk as fast as you can don't be afraid turn around turn around come because your wound is not healing there is a wound but there is not healing 
from today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you where are you now you are in Zaria you are still in the force yes you are still in the force Ah? Huh? yes sir I want to pray for you do you believe God can favor yes sir I have to pray for you God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? look at me brothers and sisters I want to break this addiction from your life now are we together you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirits I'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hear what I'm saying stretch your hand don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business koinonia is a, it's like a hospital stretch your hands I will lay my hands on every one of them Please, all of you should pray. I want to break addiction from your life. Don't feel condemned. Jesus will help you. It must be broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. Any kind of addiction. Out. Out. Now. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus out look at this guy out break from his life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be set free be set free as soon as I lay my hands on you continue praying be set free addiction break break in the name of Jesus hold my hands darling no addiction for liquor no addiction for drugs something is leaving you i'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head out of her life now in the name of jesus i break that addiction ah. hey jimmy come the lord is saying you should pray for this guy he will pray for you this guy needs serious prayer just lay your hands on him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus out out now I command that devil this is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now Hold my hands. You are a nice lady, but we have to break this thing. Lord, please, for your mercy, let it be broken in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to somebody. I'm seeing a very interesting case. You love God. Please don't be ashamed. There is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to. Who is that person? I want to pray for you now. Whether you are sick or not, come and stand here. Particular pain reliever. You can't help it. You can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it. It's a spirit. Pain reliever. I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital. God is visiting addictions this night. Quickly come. Don't sit back and say, I'm all right. Allow God set you free. Let them come. Look at this. Pain. I don't know what it is, but I hear my spirit pain reliever. Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. Shala sata pradiki
there's one of you fire is coming on you now after that fire comes on you then i'll pray for the rest that's the instruction god is giving me one of you fire literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as i lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken now if they are for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus it's broken now in the name of jesus broken in the name of jesus place your hand on your stomach god is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of jesus christ addiction broken now addiction broken now by the power of the holy ghost addiction is broken now in the name of jesus christ broken now hold my hands let her go in the name of jesus christ there is a spirit that wants to destroy your life i command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the holy spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of jesus christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the lord now praise the lord please accept you are nursing a child or doing something let's all rise those outside they are still praying for you no problem all other people please stand up rise up i want us to pray if you are yet to submit your prayer request please do it quickly the bible says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come in one minute god can turn your life around everyone stretch your hands here and pray i'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart lord i will not have to write this again pray i've written it the bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray i'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the god of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray Shalakata prata kato sapretiash. Le prende kosoto prato kasha prati kada baladabash. In the next one minute, I'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say, Lord, this is the last of the prayer request that I'm having to write concerning this issue. Hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment jesus i present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you, turn it around now. Turn it around now. Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible we we collide that case with the power of god and we produce testimonies now 
whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now whoever must hear god for this prayer to be answered hears god now father i pray in the name of jesus may your people not have to write this again agree with me may your people not have to write this again lord i pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring god wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him god wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith god has declared that is our year of triumph i want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping i'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no god i must stand before your people are you hearing what i'm saying as i speak over your life now among the many things i want to speak right now i want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as zion travels there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get a soto ropashiata grace for performance every 
keeping hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now i prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is God in your life. I release that dimension of favor now. Listen. You can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of God. You will struggle for nothing. Please hear me. I prophesy it again. Whoever is lacking favor on his life. I decree from this night. Carry favor. Inside, outside, everywhere, online, carry favor. Let me prophesy over finances. Whatever makes money run away from you. Don't say I'm talking about money. You need it for what is coming in ahead. Whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury 
I turn it around now. I turn it around now. I pray for every student here. Malasuda kabari katoshne labrikatis kalabrati the kind of results you have never seen i release it to you now i release it by the spirit i release it from the spirit in the name of jesus christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiment they have trampled upon you i decree and declare may the angel of god responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest i pray for your loved ones i pray for you Whoever is called jobless here, yeah. before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction very clear direction for the next level of their lives could be maritally could be geographic location whatever it is hear god in this season like never before hear god in this season like never before lift your hands i release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now sapoto so receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has set over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has set over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, I tear that fail completely in the name of Jesus. favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit I'm praying it again begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit the mantle of honor that God has put upon my life God has put upon this ministry you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why it should not work in your life I command it to start speaking now.
no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night i release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night i don't know what took away your passion for the house of god but in the name of jesus may a love for the house of god like never before come upon you in the name of jesus the grace god released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you i speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked god in your life i command that in as you enter april from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter april it will not be april full it will be april wise it will be april breakthrough it will be april miracles it will be april speed agree with me again i'm praying with you between now and miracle service april please hear me results together with tears in your eyes for joy you will return with them results together with tears of joy in your eyes wave your hands and give jesus all the praise wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord for performance thank you lord for performance in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Pasca Matata Branda de Tecapo, Tete Branda Catapa Cotosco for Breca Teca Necata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline. Grant